Good evening and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Tina Jha. Before we go over to the headlines, Rajya Sabha TV appeals to all its viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Wear face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and don't forget to maintain physical distancing whenever you step outside. Remember, these simple precautions by you are all that it takes to defeat the ongoing pandemic. And now let's get you the headlines of the day. President notifies budget session of Parliament, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha to convene with appropriate COVID protocols. Upper House to hold sittings from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Lower House from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Budget session of Parliament to commence with the President's address on the 29th of January. Union budget to be presented on 1st February with 33 scheduled sittings. Session to conclude on the 8th of April. Preparations to carry out the world's largest vaccination campaign nearly complete. Prime Minister Modi to signal the start of the campaign at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. Government prepares for fresh round of talks with farmer leaders tomorrow. Union Minister Narendra Singh Tomar reiterates government's commitment to protect the interests of farmers at all costs. And across the country, people observe Makar Sankranti, Bihu in Assam and Pongal in Tamil Nadu. The President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister greet the nation on the occasion. President Ramnath Kovind has summoned both Houses of Parliament to meet on the 29th of January for the budget session. He will address the joint session of Parliament in Central Hall at 11 a.m. on the same day. The session will conclude on the 8th of April. The union budget will be presented on 1st February. The first phase of the budget session will adjourn on the 15th of February. The second phase will begin on 8th March and will conclude on the 8th of April. Both houses will hold 33 sittings during the budget session. Due to COVID-19 protocols, both houses will hold sittings in shifts. The Rajya Sabha, which is the upper house, will sit from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., except on 29th of January and the 1st of February, while Lok Sabha will hold sittings from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. On the 1st of February, the sitting of the Rajya Sabha will commence one hour after the conclusion of the presentation of the union budget in the Lok Sabha. There will be no question hour in the upper house that day. Also, there will be a separate sitting of the Rajya Sabha for the transaction of government business on 29th January. This will be held one hour after the conclusion of the sitting of the Lok Sabha after the President's address. The Indian Armed Forces on Thursday celebrated Veterans Day, the day when the nation honours the first Commander-in-Chief of the Indian Armed Forces, Field Marshal K.M. Karyapa, who retired on this day in 1953. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh laid a wreath at the Headquarters Training Command of the Indian Air Force in Bengaluru. Here's a report. India doesn't want a war, but its soldiers are capable of giving a fitting reply if any superpower hurts the country's pride. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh delivered this barely wailed message to China on Veterans Day. The whole world is your family. This message has come from the world. If it has come from any country, it has come from the world. And it has come from the world. It has come from the world. हम किसी से लड़ना नहीं चाहते हम शांति चाहते 
हम सबके सम्मान की सुरक्षा के पक्ष में है किसी के सम्मान पर चोट नहीं पहुंचाना चाहते लेकिन यह बात भी दो टूक शब्दों में बताना चाहते हैं कि हमारे भारत के स्वाभिमान पर दुनिया की बड़ी से बड़ी ताकत ये चोट पहुंचाने की कोशिश करेगी भारत के जवानों के अंदर वह कुत है कि उसका वह मुंह तोड़ जवाब दे सकते द डिफेंस मिनिस्टर प्रेज द इंडियन सोल्जर्स who showed extraordinary courage in eliminating terrorists on pakistani soil western front par bhi western front par bhi kis bahaduri ke kis jazbe ke baad hamare jawan apne dushmanon ka muqabla kar rahe hain aur iske pehle bhi jis tarike se karke dikhaya hai aatankwadi thikanon par bharat ki dharti se nahi balki pakistan ki dharti par jaakar aatankwadi thikanon तो समाप्त करने में जो कामयाबी हासिल की है भारत के इतिहास में बेमिसाल ही सेट द एक्विजिशन ऑफ 83 थ्री इंडिजिनस एल सी ए तेजस फाइटर जेट्स विल जनरेट ओवर फिफ्टी थाउजेंड जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज और कई स्टेप हम लोगों ने उठाए अपने वेपन प्लेटफॉर्म एवल्यूशन का इंडियनाइजेशन कैसे हो सकता है यह सिलसिला प्रारंभ किया आज के कुछ ही चार पांच दिन पहले ही एक एक्टी थ्री तेजस एयरक्राफ्ट के बारे में हम लोगों ने अभी ऑर्डर दिया है एच एल को जिसमें कि 73 थ्री ये फाइटर एयरक्राफ्ट होंगे और 10 ये ट्रेनिंग एयरक्राफ्ट होंगे लेकिन 83 थ्री जो हमारे तेजस एयरक्राफ्ट जो बनेंगे इन बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियों के अतिरिक्त एमएसएमईज और छोटी लगभग 500 हंड्रेड कंपनीज उसमें इन्वॉल्व होंगी फाइव कंपनीज और फिफ्टी मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटी भी क्रिएट होने वाली है द थ्री सर्विस चीफ अटेंडेड द वेटर्स मीट इन डेली द इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेज विल सेलिब्रेट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एज द गोल्डन विक्ट्री ईयर टू कमेमोरेट द वॉर दैट लिबरेटेड बांग्लादेश इन नाइनटीन पिछले वर्ष हमारे देश और सेना के लिए बहुत ही चुनौतीपूर्ण रहा है सेना उत्तरी सीमाओं पर सुरक्षा रह में दृढ़ता से डटी रही और साथ ही कोविड महामारी का सामना सक्षम रूप से करती रही मुझे ये कहते हुए गर्व है कि इस कार्य को सफलतापूर्वक करने के लिए हमारे वेटरन्स का पूरा सहयोग मिला फॉर द एयरफोर्स स्टार्टिंग एज एन ऑक्जिलरी फोर्स इन नाइनटीन थर्टी टू एंड ग्रोइंग टू वेयर वी आर टूडे लीतल पोर्टेंट एरोस्पेस पार on this veterans day i would like to acknowledge with deep respect and pride the contribution of all our veterans in this journey it's the 50th anniversary of our splendid victory in the 1971 war and this bears a special significance in our national conscience and is accordingly being celebrated across the country as swarnim vijay varsh so on behalf of all men in white I salute our veterans who participated in the 1971 war. In his message on the occasion, Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat said, "India's armed forces have displayed courage in times of conflict and compassion to support its citizens, and the ex-servicemen community has been a source of motivation for them." He also said, "The armed forces continue to seek guidance of the ex-servicemen who had set high standards for the military." Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV India will celebrate the 73rd Army Day on Friday the day is celebrated on the 15th of January every year to mark the contributions made by the soldiers and the sacrifices done by them to protect the country and the lives of the citizens on the eve of army day army chief general manoj mukund narwane addressed the nation listen in pichla saal kai chunautiyon tatha avsaron ka varsh tha हमारी सक्रिय सीमाओं पर निरंतर हमारा संकल्प और पराक्रम की परीक्षा होती रही भारतीय सेना राष्ट्र की संप्रभुता और सुरक्षा सुनिश्चित करने के प्रति कृति संकल्प रही है हमारे बहादुर अफसर्स जे और जवानों ने भारतीय सेना के सर्वोच्च परंपरा का पालन करते हुए जान की बाजी लगाकर भी हमारे दुश्मनों को हमेशा मुंह तोड़ जवाब दिया है The army chief said 2020 had been very challenging for the country 
and the armed forces bravely stayed at the borders while also battling the coronavirus pandemic efficiently. Bharatiya Sena ne seema par se prayojit atangwad ya state sponsored terrorism ka nirantar datkar mukabla kiya hai. Chahe wo desh ke andar ho ya sarad ke par. Humara sandesh bilkul spasht hai. Bharatiya Sena rastra ke suraksha ke liye atangwad ke jadho tak war karega. Ye humara vada hai. ठीक उसी तरह हम देश के सीमाओं पर एक तरफा यथास्थिति बदलने के किसी भी साजिश को सफल नहीं होने देंगे द इंडियन एयरफोर्स हैज वेलकम द गवर्नमेंट्स डिसीजन टू प्रोक्योर 83 तेजस फाइटर जेट्स एयर चीफ मार्शल आर के एस भदौरिया सेड द हिस्टोरिक डिसीजन विल बोलस्टर द कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ द इंडियन एयरफोर्स कंसीडरेबली द कैबिनेट कमेटी ऑन सिक्योरिटी हैड ऑन वेंसडे approved the procurement of the indigenously developed aircraft for the indian air force at a cost of 48000 crore rupees it is a huge step for the uh, indian air force capability building and uh, it's also a very big boost to our indigenous industry because uh, with the chain making it a lot of uh, second and third tier uh, suppliers will be from the industry and i think it's also a big recognition of our designers who have been behind the lca program itself from ada and a lot of uh, effort has gone behind this program so uh, overall for the indian air force and for the country i think it is a very big huge step moving on to some other news the government and farmers will hold the next round of talks on friday the meeting is being held two days after the supreme court's decision to set up a committee to resolve the issue meanwhile bhupender singh mart one of the four members of the supreme court appointed panel has recused himself from this committee ahead of the ninth round of its talks with agitating farmers on 15 january the government has said the future course of action will be decided after the meeting aisa hai ki ye date pehle ki tay thi us samay यूनियन के नेता और माननीय मंत्री जी के साथ में जब वार्ता हुई थी तो उस समय इसका निर्णय हुआ था तो अब इसके बाद में अब जो निर्णय होगा किसान यूनियन के नेता क्या कहते हैं कैसे करना है उसके आगे बात बढ़ाई जाएगी बात दौर बात बातचीत का दौर तो खत्म नहीं होना चाहिए लेट बाई एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र सिंह तोमर एट राउंड ऑफ टॉक्स है टेकन प्लेस विद एजुटेटिंग फार्मर्स ग्रुप सो फार This will be the first meeting after the Supreme Court set up a committee to talk to the agitating farmers on three farm laws and make recommendations. Experts believe the committee may play a crucial role in resolving the deadlock. We have informed government that you see in our sector that non rice rice and wheat sector cereal sector there is a this problem of processing value addition long term agreement and export. This sector is suffering because there is no MSP there is no long term uh, agreements and all that. So India is also under WTO has to develop its competitiveness, and therefore I will come to consider that the Supreme Court appointment of committee is really appreciable, and we are thankful to the court, and definitely it will provide an opportunity for farmers across the country. For their part, the government and a few agitating farmer groups have stated that they are in favour of continuing the dialogue to resolve the issue. Ravindra Singh Shaw answers report for Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now get you all the updates related to the COVID vaccination drive, which is set to begin on Saturday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the vaccine rollout of India's COVID-19 vaccination drive on the 16th of January. The Prime Minister is also likely to launch the COVID or COVID Vaccine Intelligence Network app for real-time monitoring of COVID-19 vaccine delivery and distribution. Nearly 3 lakh healthcare workers will get the vaccine shots at 2,934 sites across the country on the first day. Each vaccination session will have a maximum of 100 beneficiaries. All 1 crore 65 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccines 1.1 crore of covid shield and 55 lakh of covaxin have been allocated to all states and union territories the cost of vaccination of healthcare and frontline workers will be borne by the central government the prime minister besides this will also interact with some beneficiaries who will receive the covid shot on saturday
Meanwhile, the National Polio Immunization Program has been rescheduled to 31st of January due to the COVID-19 vaccination drive. The National Polio Immunization Program, as part of which children in the age group of 0 to 5 years are administered polio drops, has been rescheduled to 31st January. Commonly known as the Pulse Polio Immunization Program, it was earlier scheduled for the 17th of January across India. President Ramnath Kovind will launch the Polio National Immunization Day on 30th January by administering polio drops to some children at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. India has said that the supply of COVID-19 vaccines to other countries may take some time. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said in reply to a question that India is committed to help other countries with COVID-19 vaccines and is assessing the production schedules and supply situation. He said that since the vaccination process is about to start in India, the decision on supply to other countries will be taken in due course. In so far as the requests from countries for vaccines from India, you would recall that Prime Minister had already stated that India's vaccine production and delivery capacity will be used for the benefit of all humanity in fighting this crisis. And uh, as you would know, the vaccination process is just starting in India. It is too early to give a specific response on the supplies to other countries as we are still assessing production schedules and delivery. And uh, we will take decisions in this regard in due course. This may take some time. For the smooth process of COVID-19 vaccination, the government has introduced an application named COVIN or COVID Vaccine Intelligence Work, which is the backbone and technology behind monitoring the entire vaccination process. In this report, let's take a look at how this application will work. To monitor the COVID-19 vaccine distribution and delivery, the government has introduced the COVIN or COVID Vaccine Intelligence Network app. The free downloadable application will help iOS and Android users to record data. People can register on it to get the vaccine by uploading a valid photo identity like Aadhaar card, driving license, PAN card and passport. The app will have five modules. The administrator module is for administrators who will conduct the vaccination sessions. They can create sessions and notify respective vaccinators and managers. The module will verify details of beneficiaries and update their vaccination status. The Beneficiary Acknowledgement module will send SMS to beneficiaries and generate QR-based certificates after their vaccination. The Report module prepares reports on vaccination sessions to generate data for COVID-19 vaccination in an area and at, at the national level. Another feature is that it will send real-time data from the cold storage facilities that store COVID-19 vaccines. At present, the application is in the pre-product stage. Over 78 lakh beneficiaries, mostly health officials who will be first in line to get the vaccination, have been registered on COVIN so far. With Aruna Thakur, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And ahead of the vaccination drive, India continues to report sustained decline in daily new cases of coronavirus. 16,946 new COVID-19 cases were reported across the country in the last 24 hours. India's total cases have now crossed 1 crore 51 lakh. The total active caseload has fallen to 2 lakh 13,000, comprising only 2.03% of the total positive cases. India's daily new fatalities have also declined substantially. 198 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, taking the total death toll in India to 1 lakh 51,727. Also, with 17,652 recoveries reported in the last 24 hours, the total recoveries in the country have crossed 1.01 crore. The national recovery rate has also increased further to 96.52%. Over 7,43,000 tests were conducted on uh, Wednesday. More than 18.42 crore samples have been tested in India so far. Kerala continues to report the highest daily cases, another surge at 6,004. It is followed by Maharashtra with 3,556 new cases, while Karnataka reported 746 cases. Maharashtra also continues to see the maximum casualties, 50 deaths reported in the last 24 hours, followed by Kerala at 26 and West Bengal with 18 daily deaths.
Meanwhile, 109 people have been infected with the new mutated UK coronavirus strain across the country. A team of experts from the World Health Organization arrived in Wuhan on Thursday to probe the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. A team of 13 scientists will be examining the origins of the virus that causes COVID-19. The virus was first detected in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December 2019. Meanwhile, China on Thursday reported its first COVID-19-related death in eight months. It now has 4,635 deaths and 81,844 cases. Globally, coronavirus cases have crossed 93 million and claimed nearly 2 million lives. In some other news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday shared on Twitter an article written by him on Atmanirbhar Bharat for the Manorama Yearbook 2021. In his exclusive article titled Atmanirbhar Bharat Transforming India, the Prime Minister said, Some may call the year 2020 as a year of external disruptions due to the pandemic, but I believe that 2020 will be known as a year of internal discovery for India. The Prime Minister also said that in the face of trying circumstances, India has not only stayed firm but also helped the entire world. Prime Minister Modi will interact with founders and managers of startups at a global summit of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. He has appealed to the youth to take part in the program that will be held virtually on the 15th and 16th of January. Here's a report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with startup founders at the Praram Startup India International Summit on Saturday. The summit marks the fifth anniversary of the Startup India Initiative that the Prime Minister launched on 16th January 2016. The Prime Minister has urged youngsters to take part in the virtual summit, which he said will bring together the top minds from industry, academia, investment, banking, finance and of course the young startup leaders. The two-day summit is a follow-up to the Prime Minister's announcement at the fourth BIMSTEC summit in Kathmandu in August 2018, where India committed to host the BIMSTEC startup conclave. As a uh, youth, we have to start a startup. So, there are many things that we have to do, such as funding, how to get a lot of investors. We have to do these things through it. So, this is a very good workshop that I will attend for two days. And I will request that all youth will attend. We need to increase our growth and we need to move forward from job culture. We need to increase our entrepreneurship and skill development. And also, I think that the youth has a lot of input रहेगा और अपना एक contribution रहेगा as a youth हम ये समझते हैं कि हमें skill development और खुद के self startup and entrepreneurship पे बहुत ज़्यादा ध्यान देना चाहिए। प्रधानमंत्री जी की ये बहुत अच्छी मुहिम है और युवाओं को इसमें बढ़ चढ़ के हिस्सा लेना चाहिए और जहाँ तक बात startup को लेकर के है देखिए एक PM साहब ने हमारे युवाओं के लिए एक vision set किया है इस the summit is organized by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. It will have participation from over 25 countries and over 200 global speakers. The summit will also mark the largest startup conference organized by the Government of India since the launch of the Startup India Initiative. With inputs from Mohammad Fateh Tipu, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Ministry of External Affairs said on Thursday that there will be no chief guest on the Republic Day Parade this year. The Ministry said that the decision has been taken in view of the global COVID-19 situation. Now, this will be the first time in at least five decades that the Republic Day celebrations will not have a chief guest. Earlier, there have been three such occasions in 1952, 1953 and 1966. This year, India had invited British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, but he had to cancel his visit due to the spread of a mutant strain of the virus in the UK. It, uh, due to the global COVID-19 situation, it has been decided that this year there will not be a foreign head of state or head of government as the chief guest for our Republic Day event. BJP President J.P. Nadda visited Tamil Nadu on Thursday 
and attended the Namauru Pongal celebrations in Chennai. Addressing the gathering, the BJP president said that the state has a unique mix of economic development with religious sentiments and culture. He said it has been the guiding force for the light of India for centuries. He also talked about the work done by the centre in the state, adding that the central government is committed to the development of Tamil Nadu. He added that the central government has approved several projects, including construction of 11 medical colleges in Tamil Nadu. Under Prime Minister Modi in the NDA government, gave Tamil Nadu 5,42,000 crores. This shows that what feeling Prime Minister Modi has for the people of Tamil Nadu. Mainstreaming, bringing them in the front of the development, has been the basic ethos on which Prime Minister Modi is working, and we could see that in the 14th Finance Commission, by allotting 5,42,000 crores, Tamil Nadu has taken a big leap as far as development is concerned. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi also visited Tamil Nadu on Thursday and witnessed the traditional sport, Jalikattu. Hailing Tamil tradition, Rahul Gandhi said that Tamil culture, language and history are essential for India's future and they need to be respected. Rahul Gandhi also attended Pongal celebrations in Madurai. In some international news now, Donald Trump has become the first U.S. president to be impeached twice. The House of Representatives voted on Wednesday night to charge him with misconduct in office for a second time. Trump is accused of inciting a mob that stormed Congress last week after he repeated false claims of election fraud, the violence claimed five lives. Donald Trump was impeached by 232 is to 197 vote by the U.S. House. It was supported by all Democrats and 10 Republicans as well. The Senate will not hold a trial before the 20th of January when Democrat Joe Biden assumes presidency. The President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister on Thursday greeted nation on the occasion of harvest festivals. The President wished for harmony, love and affection in the society. Vice President M. Benkaya Naidu wished for happiness, good health, strengthening bond among the people and prosperity for all. The Vice President celebrated Sankrant with his family by performing a puja at Sri Vigneshwara Temple in Goa. Prime Minister Modi also greeted people on the occasion. He wished for happiness, harmony, good health and success for all. And that's it from us in this bulletin. But before we leave, we once again appeal to all our viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Wear face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and maintain physical distancing each time you step outside. Remember, these simple precautions by you are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic. Good night. Take care of yourselves and your families. Thank you very much for your time.